What's going on everybody? This is 13 with Superior Mobile by 13 and today I want to talk about the grill lighting setup that I am doing for this Dodge Charger. There's some things about it that are pretty typical and there are some things about it that are pretty non-typical. First of all, I want to mention that there are always ways to do installs better and there are always corners that can be cut in order to make installs cheaper. What I try and do as a professional is find what actually benefits the client for longevity and performance and figure out what is just flash and showing off pictures for the gram. So first of all, we do have addressable fog light halos. Those are installed right there. As you can see, there's no halo mounting wire. It's very clean. It looks like it belongs there and that's what we go for. So there's a two-step process just for that alone of mounting the halo to the fog light assembly, which has to be removed in order to accomplish that. And then there's mounting the diffuser, which I actually do to the bezel itself so that it sort of floats. This is the only wire loom that I don't actually mess with and it goes right here. This zip tie, this is a strain relief, okay? So we do have a connector right there which has dielectric grease in it. We got strain relief and then becomes my custom wiring. So this is an addressable LED setup, meaning it's gonna be significantly different than just an RGB or RGBW setup. I, being who I am, of course, only quoted two hours of install labor for this job because in my head, I was still thinking just typical RGB strips. Two hours is simply not enough time in order to do this job. I've probably got about five or six hours into this. For the bottoms, we did two strips right side by side. Every time I have a connection, what I do is I solder directly to the solder pads themselves and then I use an epoxy and I seal in the ends so that they are completely waterproof. This is a good example of it right here. You're gonna ask yourself, well, why are there wires connected when I didn't need this? That's because I messed up because even I make mistakes. And in fact, I make a lot of mistakes a lot of the time. So I originally wired in this strip backwards and I didn't need wires there. So I had to seal the ends of those wires as well. But it does does demonstrate the type of epoxy sealant that I use that makes sure that I don't have any water penetration into this strip itself. Now, because these are addressable strips, I can't just run one continuous strip across the entire thing. I have to do a left and a right channel. You can see this electrical tape right here. This again is a strain relief. So strain relief is always very important. Vehicles are vibrating things. So everything is going to be subjected to excessive vibration and you have to design and install according to that. We've got a lot of wires running around here, okay? They're loosely zip tied together. However, you can see that I didn't loom them. I didn't decorate them. I didn't do any of that. Now, if someone is going to pay me in order to do that, if I want to quote seven hours for this job, then I can go back and I can loom everything. So this is purely a cost decision. This is a time decision is that I, A, I underquoted, but B, even if I did quote appropriately, this will never be seen. Like, I mean, literally, even if you raise the hood, you will never be able to see this wiring. And loom has two purposes. One is aesthetics and one is to prevent against abrasion and such. That is not a factor in this particular instance. We're drilling through plastic. This is not a real dangerous situation. This is not going to be exposed to any elements. They're tucked and hidden away inside this bumper cover. Now, of course, one of the biggest things that you may have noticed by now is the fact that I have constructed acrylic mounting places, and this is an acrylic shield, acrylic right there, as well as acrylic bridges across there and in the middle and right there. So first of all, you've got acrylic that needs to have in stock. You need to be able to cut it effectively and then I have a plastic epoxy so it is strong and it will hold and what that allows me to do is to have all of these strips securely mounted which is going to increase the longevity and it also positions them accurately so that we're gonna get the maximum light output where we want it now for the top girl section we have an upper strip and we have a lower strip right ta-da and then for the bottom one because I couldn't do a lower strip across there I just did a double stack across the top so they're gonna have a lot of light for both the top section and the lower section. Now the wires do have to come from up here down to here. That wire coming down here, so I coupled all of my wires with it and just wrapped it with electrical tape. And this will be black and it goes over, there's a big piece of black plastic on the vehicle itself, so you'll never be able to see this, which will be real nice, so it keeps it nice and hidden. So all three of these sets of strips share the same input and only the bottom strips have an output which goes into the fog light halos. Now our input, which is this guy right here, is gonna come out of the headlight and so that's gonna come into right there and feed all three of them on both sides so all six strips will have their two inputs right there and right there and I know what I just said didn't make any sense and that's why I don't need an output right there which is what I mistook earlier so I'm explaining all of this because people often do not understand the amount of work that goes into doing a lighting installation correctly and the amount of time that it takes and therefore they do not understand the price point associated with quality work again
again, there are plenty of ways that I could actually do this install better, cleaner, and certainly not to make mistakes. And there are tons of ways, and I mean tons of ways, that we could have made this install a lot faster and a lot cheaper. This is my preferred balance of cost and reliability. Consider this a nice, rare, behind the scenes look at the type of work that I do, because the next time you see this grill, it is gonna be on that vehicle and it will be installed and it will be beautiful and you can enjoy the light show and understand the amount of effort that went into making something just look pretty. Okay, I know people are gonna yell at me if I don't actually show it in action, so of course here it is. And those feed all the way into the halos. Thanks for watching, this is 13 with Superior Mobile by 13. Have yourselves a wonderful day.